And action. And welcome, everybody. This is BMP Weekly, episode 219. It is 25th of September, 2023. It's super important to remember the mentioned in the year, right? Uh, <laughs> we did actually record this week's uh, interview already last week, uh, but we're recording the, the articles and latest things uh, today on just before uh, publishing the, the podcast. Now, uh, in the BMP Weekly, I always talk about the latest on Microsoft 365 all up, uh, covering also the articles, and we typically have a visitor in place as well. Who's our visitor this week, Michael? Michael, <laughs> see? Wow. <laughs> you totally not spill the beans there at all. <laughs> Wow. Okay, I need to sleep more. <laughs> ah, so, who's the visitor, Valdek? <laughs> this week, Steve. Steve. This week, our visitor, our guest is Michael Roth. He is uh, MVP from Germany. He yep. specializes in Power Platform uh, governance adoption. And we had a really interesting chat with him about what's involved like what are really the hard things about adoption and uh, the governance so i guess without further ado how about we jump into the, the interview let's do that excellent welcome michael joining on the pmp weekly uh, i do not know which episode this is we probably said it 219 on the intro. 219 oh. thank you thank you recapping well like, um that's a decent number actually now uh, michael thank you for joining this is your first time on the show um I know that you're an MVP and all of that stuff, but let, rather than us explaining who you are, let's give you the podium on explaining what do you do for a living, who you are, and what's your background. Oh, that's good. You have questions like uh, what do you do for a living and so on, because I yeah. think yes. introduce yourself was one of the hardest tasks ever. <laughs> it's yeah, like, true, uh, true. Who, who, who am I? Damn it. What do yeah. I do for fun? Ah, damn it. <laughs> I, um, I have to what say, is the meaning of life? Here, so Chris, Kent, Chris Kent has the most awesome way of doing that in all of these demos. Hey, I'm Chris. Okay, so let's jump on the... <laughs> we get this all the way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let, let's go. So, yeah, um, first of all, thanks for having me. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm Michael. I um, work with stuff around the Power Platform and... Um, I'm in the very lucky position to uh, wrap my head around all the fun things in Power Platform, governance, administration, licensing. I think we can all agree. Um, yeah, I'm from, <laughs> from Germany, Cologne. I uh, live here with uh, two small girls, my daughters, and um, try to keep up with uh, work, community stuff, and some kind, something like a personal life. Um, which uh, Waldeck and I just discussed is a lot, and I'm yeah. still waiting for those rainy autumn evenings where you have time to for your side projects, like your hobbies and everything. You know, yes, uh, hopefully this autumn. So there's a simple way of mastering this: do not have friends. So you know, you have more. Just kidding. Oh. Please have friends. <laughs> just kidding. I almost wanted to say like, don't have a, a, a life. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah. No, no, that no, don't don't point. listen to this. This is not an advice. <laughs> yes. This is not a professional advice in any way. Do not listen yes. to us. Sure, sure. No, absolutely not. But I hope I will have some time in the next few months because I only have one in-person event left, MPPC. And after that, I firmly believe that things will get a little bit quiet until Christmas and then I have time for everything again. Let's actually yeah. jump on that one and let's get back on the yep. bit about the history and all of that in a second. You'll be in MPPC. Uh, what yes. is MPPC? And in, I know that it's MGM Grant, uh, but for those who don't know what it, that means. Yes. MPPC is short for the Microsoft Power Platform Conference. Uh, happens the second time now. I think last year it was in Orlando. This time it's in Las Vegas, which is amazing, actually. <laughs> it's, it's, Have you been in Vegas before? <laughs> Yes, at okay. the uh, M365 conference this year. Oh, there we go. <laughs> this yes. was my yes. first time in America uh, at all. And Las Vegas is overwhelming, actually. Um, but you, yeah, you either person... like it or you hate it. So it's kind of a... <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I'm, I'm still in the progress of liking it, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's this really huge uh, Power Platform conference where I think a lot of news and publications will be shared. And uh, okay. I'm really excited to go there. And um, I'm especially excited because this time I'm not... Uh, I have two sessions there, but I don't have like my key sessions, but I'm actually uh, joining Lindsay Stelton, who's a fellow Microsoft Biz Apps MVP, and she's talking about her experience because first time she was at MPPC in Orlando, she discovered there is something like Power Platform Governance, and she was like, oh, we don't have governance. 
we should start that. And this year she's presenting her story, the story of her organization, now which got from like zero governance to a really functional thing. And I really like those real life stories. And um, I helped her a little bit during the process and I'm really excited to share this, what she done and how she did it and to maybe be an inspiration to some somebody else. You, you mentioned you have two talks, right? What are you going to talk, talk on? Uh, two talks, yeah. The, the one is uh, Lindsay's story. Yep. Uh, yep. From, from from zero to governance. And the other one is uh, actually an old one. And I didn't realize I still have this active on my Sessionize profile. This is how to leverage the Power Platform Admin Center with the Center of Excellence Starter Kit and why you need both and which tool is for which, which, yep. um, which of your tasks, basically, because you need both. And um, and the funny thing is, though, the first time I get this session was about all the little bugs in the COE and how to uh, get by. And now all those bugs are fixed. And now I have to come up with a whole new story. What are we going to talk about? Huh? <laughs> Damn it. So, so maybe, maybe as, as a prep, right? So you, you're in this space and you're obviously pa pa passionate about governance and uh, related topics. What is it and why would you, why should people care? TLD yeah, right? So yeah, in Power Platform, come on, it's low code, no code. Why would, yeah. why would that matter? So it's, it's, how hard can it be? Yes. How hard can it be? What should <laughs> possibly go wrong? Yes. And well, it, yeah, how and much time code. do we have? We have 20 minutes. Go. Yep. That is what. <laughs> Actually, I like to quote Microsoft when they say it's low code and everyone can do it. It's easy. Um, and that is kind of true. I don't want to do too deep into that. But um, the point is um, the the story I hear all the time from Microsoft is everyone can and should do it. And so usually most of the organizations I know and meet, uh, everyone is at least keen to try. And they do. And if you try the first times, it doesn't matter what you try for the first time, you usually fail or you develop a kind of ex experience and then you have still like this technical depth solution, those flows like one, two, three test or something. And some of them tend to uh, be ignored because you don't need them anymore, but are not switched off and they are still running in the background. And you're wondering, I got an email from flow. What's that about? Um, nah, don't care. So there are things happening, especially when you have a learning curve, even if it might be steep or not that steep, it doesn't matter. Um, the point is, um, Power Platform is, as the name says, a platform and you want to establish this platform in a good way so that people and citizen developer can make good experience and like really fit from the platform. But if you don't have any governance or guidelines in place, then it's difficult to do so. And not even with the technical implementation and the technical guardrails that a governance is about, it's even about the communication. If I, as, a, as an organization, set up a platform and don't tell my users how to use it, how they can benefit from it, then it's like... Try an error. Try your best. Yep. Yep. So, and since again, I'm from Germany, I am. Yep. Sorry. I, I'm, I'm, I'm keen about like rules and regulations. This is our thing, right? And <laughs> um, but I think governance is so much more. It really yep. helps with pushing the adoption of Power Platform, and, and that's all the things. That's that's what I really think everyone should care. I guess that's 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 the key word. Governance doesn't mean that it would not be used less or or a, a reduced value it's key for driving adaption so governance is an enabler not denier exactly so to say it's so. it, it helps your users to make the right decisions yes and yes and the, is is it kind of would it be fair to compare it to basically when you drive a car there are laws and there are signs there are marks on the road but the, the same thing it helps us to do it in an orderly way as opposed to Italy, where everybody just drives somewhere and it's like chaos. No, no, no. All of the Italians are listening. There's nothing wrong. We do not. This is not an official statement. <laughs> well, on, on, on the other hand, it's not, there's nothing official about this show. It's just our our opinions and jokes. You just insulted the whole country. What the? <laughs> no, not, not, it's, not really. It's facts. Actually, not because I think there is a very very good point in what you're saying. Um, since there is not one governance concept that fits all organizations, yep. um, you have to adapt it to your uh, to your how you how you work, how is your working style, your organizational culture, so to say. And those are um, you have different cultures in different countries how to how to drive, and what you need to drive. I mean, in Germany, we need lots of signs and lots of rules and regulations to even 
to, to start to to get into the traffic. But in Italy, for example, you don't need that much because people are used to that, and that reflects just a different style of governance, for example. So yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. And what I see recently a lot is like people put up governance, like lots of signs, but they don't explain what they mean. And then it's really like just figuring out, see like, okay, there's a sign. What does it mean? I don't know. Let's see what happens if I just ignore it. Yep. And that happens a lot recently. I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I guess so, coming back on the, so so the governance is also, like I said, uh, within the intro governance is also making sure that the people know how to start using things. Um, and again, that drives adoption, which basically maximizes the return of investment because to be able yeah. to use some of this stuff, there is a money. Somebody has invested at least Microsoft 365 or additional licenses in Power Platform. So maximizing that value for the company, yeah. uh, it's important to have that governance place, a uh, governance plan in place. So. Yeah, and it, it even starts with the regular M365 license because you can use Power Platform yes. with that. And if you don't Correct. use it, then you're just burning money, basically. Correct. So, Correct. Yeah. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, and maybe also to add to that, some mistakes are costly, right? And you want to <laughs> do avoid them, right? Yeah. So that, that, that is also like trying to set up everybody basically in the company for uh, uh, success, right? Basically led them to benefit from things as opposed to have the risk that maybe they will do something wrong and harmful. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So there are the two sides. On the one hand, you want to really uh, maximize what you get out of the license, what you already pay for. On the other hand, you want to um, don't want those costly oops moments. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, yeah. I've, I've seen a few of those. They're like five digits numbers saying, oops. We didn't mean to do that, <laughs> and uh, yeah. you won't definitely want to avoid that. And governance health was most obviously here. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, uh, so many questions. So, so <laughs> one thing what came to my mind immediately. I'm just asking this from Michael because you obviously work on this area with customers and and the Power Platform side. So, do you see Power Platform like low code, no code? And and yes, there is a pro code storytelling in Power Platform as well, and absolutely suitable mode. Do you still see? Uh, so how would I put it in quotes, graduation of certain processes and solutions from the Power Platform to Azure implementations if they're being adapted more widely by customers. Well, what I mean with this one is coming back on, we talked about the, the governance and basically somebody creates a first solution and then in Excel or previously in Access and then all of a sudden people are like, oh, this is brilliant, we're going to use this. And then within a decade, all of a sudden the whole business is running on top of that Excel file or the Access file, which was never intended to be like that. Nothing wrong um, with that. <laughs> <laughs> Excel is an excellent data source. Come on. Yes. Yeah, well, it is for a certain limit, uh, within yeah. the limits. Yes. <laughs> But do you see like that the, is the Power Platform uh, already, is it a mature enough to be the end game or is it more like a, a if it's being really adapted enterprise wide, is it then getting adapted in other areas? So how do you see, is there this kind of a transition from Power Platform to more pro 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 Azure implementations? Uh, well, I think that heavily depends on who's talking or consulting those organizations because I see <laughs> that a lot, basically, and yes. especially in the last two years, Power Platform has become a buzzword. Like, yes. this is a new, kind of new and shiny tool that everyone wants to use. And I am partly working in pre-sales as well, so I have the joy of getting those early use cases sometimes. And... Um, I've had some customers, or I didn't have some customers actually, that said, okay, this is our use case. We want to do this and this and this, and we want your solution with the Power Platform. And I said, I wouldn't use the Power Platform at all because this is a business process and you don't want those processes to run the user context, but on a broader level. So skip Power Platform altogether. And um, it's, it's funny what, uh, what, what kind of reactions you get sometimes. I had this one customer and I said, nope, don't use Power Platform. I said, this is a bold move from you. I ask you for a Power Platform solution. You just say, skip it and go to Azure. I said, yeah, and I mean it. <laughs> hey, you got the job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that is really that. Like people really look for that advice, right? Because like yes. at Microsoft, we yes. offer yes. all the options, but at the end of the day, you need to pick the right tool for the job and having yes. that experience differentiates you from, from other folks who actually don't have it and they have a hammer and everything is a nail, right? Exactly, yeah. But uh, basically, you were mentioning the maturity of the Power Platform right now, from Power Platform to maybe Azure or more Pro Code device. But also, the um, I see the maturity from this personal productivity. I have an Excel file, and I yes. I try to leverage that. This is still a challenge for me and many of my customers actually, because um, it within governance, I usually implement some of the processes that 
shows that broadcasts cool solutions like tell everyone what you got and what there already is and then um uh try to to get some some flags like if a solution or flow or an app is used with from i'd say 50 60 people then you can think about maybe this is becoming business critical and more important how do you broadcast that to other makers to other people who can benefit from that and um, this is still a challenge but i see that there are more and more possibilities and this is what i really like so coming from a low state to a medium state to a pro code state and ever that is and with that transition from the 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 i have a personal productivity based on excel solution bring that how do i tell other people and that then we connect to m365 and the whole viva con thing and it, it all comes together there and i really like that yeah. How much do you have to know and learn up front, you as a you, uh, to be able to advise the customers about all the different options that they've got and how to really make a best use of their investments? Oh, that's a good question, actually. Um, I recently got this question from a friend. Like, if I would, if I would want to do what you do, what would I have to learn? Is there a learning path for that? And then I realized I have no idea. And I think a lot has to do with like personal experience, just being in the game for so long. I do have this change management background where I supported lots of customers with the implementation of M365 back in the early days. And I still benefit from that knowledge, like how to talk to users and all this stuff. Um, but I think a huge part is still just trying to uh, stay up to date with all the new publications, with all the new possibilities, with everything that comes from the community. I think I have uh, a window open with 50 tabs, just things I still want to read, like my reading list, my watching list, and just, oh, it's so much. <laughs> but that is, I think, one of the most important things because there are so many people out there having brilliant ideas. And you can build upon them, you can use that and get in touch. And this is, this is I think, the core of it. Yeah, I think I think one of the one of the perspectives on that one, just to even explicitly call it out, is that quite often community content is more valuable than what Microsoft does. Yes. Because quite often what Microsoft does, no offense for us, Microsoft employees, it's it's more on, hey, here's a technology, here's a thing, have fun. You need and then both. the community, community is based absolutely 100 percent The community is then adapting that and basically telling stories on, hey, this is how we use that technology and make it happen. And yeah. like Waldek said, 100 percent you need both. So you need yes. the reference and you need the experiences and opinions. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Here's a cool new product. How would you use that? And then the community takes it like we use it like this, and I've yes. done this and this. Yes. Now it it evolves back and forth and back and forth. I really like that. Yeah. yeah. So I, I wanted to ask you because you mentioned one way in which you stay up to date being uh, you read a lot. What other yeah. ways? Or what three sources would you you recommend share with listeners to top help three, them stay up three to this? Yeah, or 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 three ways, or three yeah. sources, or three people you talk mm -hmm. to regularly to stay up to date. What are your main places to go to? There, I have two main places um, that kind of keep me up to date. The one is the uh, the newsletter Power Platform Weekly. Yep. which I really like that's because they go through that's different that's sections yeah. and it comes once a week automatically. This is really nice. Um, um, this is like a, a Monday morning call with myself, just sit there with a coffee and see what's new. Um, the second one is still events because um, getting in touch with so many different people, not only people who create content, but also just use the products, like people in the audience and people mingling around. Uh, you just get so many ideas from that. I really like it. But the point is going to events can be costly because it costs money and time and especially if you have a personal life or your friends then uh, yes. it can be difficult um then i do for myself have a couple of people that i uh, reach out to on a regular basis but this is the governance administration community in power platform is rather small so this is kind of a good thing for me <laughs> this is not overwhelming <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's it's more for now. It's definitely growing, right? Yes, we 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 are growing. It's, Excellent. Uh, emerging, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, actually, I'm planning on doing something like this because I've seen so many quite little tricks and hacks for administrators, for example, and uh, they are scrolled around the the internet, and it's it's yeah. hard to keep track. And I have the idea to build, I don't know, a repository or a page to just something um 
open source where everyone can contribute and just that we collect even like small snippets and maybe flow something like the PNP samples, for example, I would like to include that as well, specifically for administrators and people working in governance or just like providing the platform for their organization. Um, we will see. One of those rainy autumn evenings, right? Ah, yeah, right. <laughs> yes. Keep We're adding just to it, right? waiting for the rain to come, right? <laughs> what is that? Well, we've got yeah, rain today the whole day, goes. so that, that doesn't mean that I get to do all kinds of stuff. <laughs> no, don't destroy my dreams and plans. Come on, you can't do that. <laughs> Now, uh, coming a bit back on the on the coming back, recapping on the on the governance side, what would be like the really the like top five, top three uh, issues? What you're seeing with customers are doing um, within the Power Platform? What what are the things what we typically would be like? You know, these are the basic. <laughs> again, these yep. three things what we're seeing what people are missing. So what could go no wrong? No governance. Yeah, but what does that mean? What does that mean in practice? Because governance is like, it's same as let's collaborate. So uh, it's just like, okay, what does that actually mean? So Yeah, I would have a two-step approach answer for that. And the first one is um, before no governance is treating administration and governance for Power Platform as a, a, a one-person job. That is, it is too much for that. And I recently say that again and again in every of my sessions, every of my blog posts, don't underestimate it, it's a lot. This is really, really important. Uh, the second thing is, I've seen many customers now who come up with a perfect um, approach to to uh, to run the platform, and but I, until it isn't perfect, they don't start. Mm -hmm. So start somewhere is really important point. Don't wait for your, for your concept to be perfect because yeah. otherwise you won't start at all. And then we come to governance itself. Uh, there are a few things that are the minimum for a good governance, like environments, DLPs, security roles, like those three. But the most important thing I always see, and this always cost me a lot of time to explain, is the tenant isolation part. Because um, it's switched off per default for every customer. And if you're using the Power Platform just for a bit, you have so many cross-tenant connections and you don't really know what you have. And you can't really detect that apart from the uh, Center of Excellence data kit when you get all the information. And usually when we open the hood and take a deep look, then we have a lot of tidying up to do. And sometimes I think even the concept is hard to explain because we need cross-tenant connections for certain services around there. But which ones are the good ones that we allow and which ones are the bad ones that we don't allow? And there is no straight answer to that. And yeah. this one is, I think many people are missing out to to get, yeah, just just to get information about that, what that we have to yeah. look into that. And you shouldn't ignore that, like really not. Yeah. And I like those uh, those demos. I did this with a customer once where I had as a, as a guest account, I got credentials. And mm -hmm. I fire up this flow from my private tenant and get some data from their tenant. And no one was realizing that. And this is like this, yeah, this, this can happen. And this happens right now and you're not aware. And this is, this, yeah, exactly. this is really dangerous. Because this you're can, using can your identity, which have been granted the permissions in the customer tenant. Yeah. And they are basically, hey, I have permissions, so I have access on information. So, and yeah. that's why the, the perform, perform permission settings and access and all of that is incredibly important, like you said. So, but exactly. even from the external tenant, you can use credentials from the other tenant to create the connection. Yeah. So even if you didn't yeah. have a guest account, yeah. you can. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. And, and when an administrator thinks, okay, uh, you got your 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 account, your credentials, and your security role. Even we have DLPs in place, data loss prevention policies. Everything is fine, right? Nope. Famous it still works. Words. Everything it's like, fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That should work. And by yeah, the way, and that's. No, and that, that's that's really many people are missing out, and this is this can become dangerous. So this is the first thing that I always ask. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, no, one one more thing, documentation. Yes, like have a good documentation. My first question is actually, uh, okay, we are going going into a governance uh, project right now. Show me your documentation. And and they give you like, like well, flow.microsoft.com. Here is documentation. Something like that, but most <laughs> most of them are kind of honest. Like we do have a documentation. We haven't written it down yet, but it is there, like in our, yeah. in my mind, in my head, yeah. something like this. And this is, oh, and I know everybody hates to write you're good documentation. You're, but... mentioning, you're mentioning a very interesting point, right? Because like you mentioned, <laughs> I think you, you you didn't use the word, but you, I think you referred to sprawl. 
basically yeah. it, because it's <laughs> su- su- such a you know commodity it's so easy to start that if you Which don't have the guardrails yep. you will have yep. a spro yep. you will have a proliferation of stuff how yep. do you find out what's out there because there is no single place as far as i know to say give me everything from everything here yeah. there's no I, way I to do that i have to say so, a good example so a good example in my case i, I did Many, many moons ago, I created uh, whatever a power automate flow somewhere in our system, uh, which is informing me when a specific form is getting filled. I can't find it anymore because in, it's in one of the environments. It's not in a default environment, but I don't How understand. Many environments what environments do you have? I don't know because I don't understand the environments in power automate. So it, and it's Call such a great Michael, example. He can help you it, in 10, 10 it minutes. It still works, which is great, but I can't find it. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, Should have and put this it is on it. Air tag. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Where is that yeah. thing? <laughs> anyway. I had this I had the same experience when I have like my organizational tenant and my private tenant and my uh, developer tenant and I had this flow somewhere in one of those tenants in one of those environments but I can't yes. find it anymore. Yeah. And this with multiple tenants is even more difficult uh with one tenant it still can be super difficult. And this is something I see that the Power Platform Admin Center is getting better at that and providing more information about the flow and the apps and the users even. This is yeah. good. But usually we just have to use the, the Center of Excellence Data Kit to, to find that one flow, uh, list all the flows that you have created, for example, regardless of the environment. There we can get this information, but it's uh, but you have to fulfill those requirements to install the COE in the first place, uh, which requires you to be an administrator usually. And that is... Um, this is a challenge, actually, if you just want that piece of information. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so but I mean, on, at least uh, there is an answer. So yeah, you there already is an have yes. the first yes. step, right? It's you already possible. have the first step, and then you can work from there and make it maybe eventually easier, more accessible, and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. So something what you answered on those on those you now four or five things, which is super super <laughs> valuable, but something which which I can relate super heavily on uh, as an example is the get started with something. Don't yeah. Try to make it perfect at the day one because we see that internally as well. Uh, and I know Waldek is, is thinking exactly the same thing because we recently talked about this, these things <laughs> that um, that the people and when they start implementing something or they start creating processes, it's always the end goal being 100% done. And the answer mm. is no, 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 no. You don't have to be 100% done. You can start with something and then evolve things. And we come back on this minimal viable product mental mindset, which is a bit of a must to be able to get something shipped because you will yes. never catch the whole thing because it's just the caveat, the caveat. If you are engineer, heart surgeon a pilot do not listen to this advice please go to school finish your school <laughs> learn the whole let's, thing let's start depending on industry happen. yes absolutely <laughs> good point <laughs> yes uh, i just saw this picture from this pilot reading this book so you want to become a ah, pilot oh, okay. like that, yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> let's see what exactly. happens could go wrong. landing <laughs> <laughs> we will get to that bridge we will pass the bridge when we get there <laughs> yes. yeah yeah, good point. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Um, in IT, we can partly do that. The other thing, what I wanted to actually kind of relate it on this one, so is, is also the documentation. But let's let's face it, um, it's an incredibly simple consulting way of saying because I'm an ex-consultant as well, recovering consultant, uh, to say always <laughs> that well, you don't have the documentation, blah blah. We should do a documentation. Nobody has the documentation because nobody has the perfect documentation. Some people have a certain level of documentation. And I would say the most interesting thing and one of the key challenges for customers and consultants and, and even for technical writers in Microsoft is, when is the documentation enough? Because if you have too much documentation, it will yeah. be outdated in a moment of like that. If you have too little yep. documentation, there's no value. So finding that right balance where it's good enough, so it's valuable, but not outdated. And what is the balance? That's it a good depends. Question. It depends. And that's why it's consulting gig. <laughs> depends on your maturity, expertise, retention yes. of your personnel and all of that. Yeah, definitely. But I just thought about something. Um, because I usually uh, say we need at least two document gov- uh, governance documents uh, or documentations. The, the technical part where we just list what we have done, our, our tent is set up and everything like this. And then some kind of a, an easier, more approachable version for, for, for the users to to see what kind of environments do I have, what I'm allowed to do, and how do I get a premium license, something like this. And for this, we have this Power Platform Community Hub, this SharePoint site collection provided by Microsoft that you can just provide as a template and deploy it, and then you can just fill out your individual 
environments and DAPs and whatnot. What it would be really nice if you uh, would put in a just, I don't know, a, a table, something in this SharePoint site that just lists your environment depending on your security role or something so that it uh, is always up to date. Yeah. And that's we awesome, accept PRs. Right? <laughs> good, good, good. Yes. See what you did there? Yeah. <laughs> but I, I really like the idea that just to keep your document a little bit up to date automatically, though, would be nice. Yes, yes. And, yeah. and if you think about it, of course, this is part of the fact that Power Platform is still relatively new. If you think about, you know, some of the products are being decades and decades old. Yeah. Um, but in some of the products in Microsoft 365, we have a sufficient level of API surface. So we can actually yeah. basically go and say, document me this and and yep. you can basically send up script which will then document you and extract the layout up to the level of basically saying okay you can apply this to another tenant and you'll have a copy of that power platform mm -hmm. we're not quite yet there so the admin apis were released relatively recently i guess a year ago they're not graph apis but they're not covering all of the different settings and configurations so the automation yeah. is a bit of a more difficult thing to do but center of excellence um kit Potentially, who knows? That's a, that's a good suggestion. Maybe the TSM. Yeah, but yeah, like that 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 isn't isn't meant for everyone. That's not meant yeah, for absolutely. a user no. to be able to find their yeah, stuff. Right? Absolutely, so there's, absolutely. There's like a, but more on um, more, yeah. overall documentation on what we have and have a report. And like I said, Michael, having a dynamically updating automatically, let's say with parts and reports and Power BIs, which are basically up to date. So whenever you go to a location, yeah. here it is. So. And a proper API actually would help the administrator or the one who is in charge for governance uh, yes. would yes. would help to provide that to to users because it, yeah. even the CUE exactly. is not for everyone. But now I'm thinking and digging into uh, into the Power Platform CLI that gives me some, some just to get the information in a fast yep. way, an approachable way, and then I can see what how do I <laughs> how or when do I put this information over to communication so they can make a nice text out of it or something or right. SharePoint communication right. site or something like this. Chat GPT, so, can you please make right. this into nice yes. paragraphs? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Don't, 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 don't sell those uh, consultant secrets so easily. Come on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the prompts, the secret is in a prompt. Yes. Yeah, that's true. true. There you go. Don't mention the prompt. Whatever yeah. you do, don't mention the prompt. <laughs> Yeah, but ChatGPT helps a lot by just putting the technical document in there and please make it more approachable for user without tech experience or something. That helps a yep. lot, yeah. Yeah, yep. absolutely. But yeah, I, I guess, and, and then the reality is that we'll at sooner or later at some point, potentially, we might have some time to like this within the product. Um, but uh, when, that could be five years, 10 years, or never. So having those APIs again in place would actually enable yeah. everybody to you know, extract the information and build something. It would be an interesting, even a, a open source community project of doing something like this, as a yeah. automation. Absolutely. So. And didn't I hear something in the last month or so about something, something pilot, co there's something going on that in, at, at Microsoft, I'm not sure. No, 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 not yet. No, Maybe that will no, come. No, no, it will come. So, no. yeah. so that could help that as well, actually. Com components? Co Compilot. Com components. Com 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 Compilot. <laughs> wow. Something wow. like that. I don't know. Go pilot. <laughs> Go pilot would be nice. Yeah. yeah, that could help as well, obviously. Yeah. So exciting times, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really interesting. And, and of course, everything is evolving all the time. Coming back on it, on the importance of governance, uh, is also that you have that change management as part of the governance messaging. Oh, yes. Because we as a Microsoft keep on evolving things and releasing things. And one of the key challenges from a company perspective is that, of course, the employees go to the external block sites and be like, oh, there's a cool feature. I want to use that. Oh, OK. So now we need to stay up to date on what does that mean within our yeah. company and all of that. That, that's what I really like about the administration and governance part of our Power Platform, and, but it's also the challenge that it has. It, it includes so many aspects. It's the the communication to the users, the change management part, the technical implementation. It's basically if you want to run a platform, there's a lot to do. You need training, you need communication, you need the technical setup, you need processes to be implemented and yep. developed and deployed. It's everything. So that what makes it. It's so nice actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's so yes. much fun, but also a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned we, we have a minute or two left, and, and I wanted to ask you about one more thing because you mentioned yeah. it a few times, change management. Yeah. What is, yeah. in your experience, the hardest thing about managing change? People. 
people. You, if there were not be people, there would not be any problems. There would be no change. There you go. No people, no change. Yeah. <laughs> that what is does that tell kind of us? Nothing change. really. <laughs> that, that's a catch-22. I agree. But um, yeah, talking to people can be exhausting and users don't read. We know that. Yeah. And yeah, um, but that is... But then there's also some like some beauty in it with talking to people if you really like can connect to them and ask what is their their business need, what's really the pain that they suffer through, what could be better. So all the Microsoft products and features apart, let's just talk on an eye to eye level and see what yes. what is yes. how does your workday look like, what could help, what could help. And that is the nice part of it actually. So and surprisingly, magically, those individual end users might have a great set of ideas, which would actually make their life easier and other people's life easier. And you'll be like, oh, this is actually really good. So it's not yes. necessarily the IT talking, who knows talk, better. Talking to so. users, that, 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 that's crazy talking, Vesta. <laughs> <laughs> you mean talking to people? What? 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 <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, but that is that is this really nice to emphasize the maybe the community aspect, not only in the tech industry, but also in your workplace. Yes. Other people have different ideas and some of them are really good. <laughs> and yes. if we put our heads together, yes. then we can come up with something great. Absolutely. And uh, that, that really comes back on yeah, the community and, and, and basically your idea, their idea. Oh my god, we have better ideas. So we're building basically wow. on this apps kind of the, yeah. the purity maturity level as we're sharing those learnings. And then we're exactly. building on the learnings between each other and everybody else in the community, which is awesome. Exactly. So. And as a foundation, we need the products from Microsoft to start somewhere. Right. And yes. then evolve them. And yeah, it's great fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> cool. Uh, final questions. What's what's happening this week or next week? Um, so what's on your uh, calendar or what's happening? What you can talk about? Anything interesting? Of course, the MGM visit. Hopefully, the computer systems are up and running there, probably. So. Again, yeah, yeah, I hope so. Uh, I hope this week uh, will nothing happen anymore because I need really to catch up with some things in life. And so I nothing don't want this week. anything to happen. I'm done with yes. it. Yes. <laughs> but uh, uh, next week, there's a Power Platform Meetup in Germany, actually, uh, for whole Germany. And I think I'm talking about uh, Power Platform Governance, the bare minimum, I guess, or become the best Power Platform Administrator. I'm not sure. One of both, but... I'm talking about something. You come there, you're like, oh, what am I talking about today? Oh, that one. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> something like this is coming up, and I still try to evolve the idea of a common place for Power Platform administrators and governance people to exchange yep. their ideas, to, to contribute. Yep. Um, hopefully, I get some time to uh, get a, a MVP out there. Just this minute before I don't start at all. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you need to have something so you can evolve that. It's always the, the hardest thing is yes. to get the my first twenty percent or ten percent in place that you are yes. able to share and start getting ideas and all of that. So, yeah. and then of course after next week you're flying to Las Vegas. Yeah. Las Vegas. <laughs> good. I hope there will be no hard jet lag this time, but yeah. Can't this is I, I, so I have this Always really simple back, solution right? uh, for jet lag. Uh, it's just really simple, hard work for me for years, which is okay. stop complaining. Stop complaining. If you're telling yourself you're tired, guess what? You'll be tired. I, I did but it. I did it all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's that's the a good universal us us solution of you to everything like if you're sick don't don't admit that you're don't sick. Be sick exactly <laughs> yeah don't be sick <laughs> don't like, give yourself the permission to work to... that way <laughs> no. of course it if does you lost an arm stop it down and you have another one <laughs> it's <laughs> just a flesh <laughs> wound come yeah. on <laughs> i need to write that down and pin it somewhere yeah. on my wall don't complain <laughs> yeah so, no, no, but, so but with all this seriously, I, I'm 100% convinced on this. And this is one of my mental mindsets, which I, I work a lot. I actually have everything somewhere there. Stop complaining, take action also. And people don't actually even see it. But it is if we're telling ourselves that we're tired, for example, for jet lag or that something is bad, something is bad. Guess what? We will start feeling more and more about yep. that message because we're telling ourselves and we're accepting that reality. And yes, we need to be realistic. And of course, you can't tackle all of the things using this thing. But it's, yeah. I'm tired, I'm tired, I can't do anything today. Look well, my eyes, my eyes, my eyes. Three, two, one, I'm <laughs> exactly. tired. Go, go in the front of the t t mirror. <laughs> yes. and, uh, not tired. But, but it's a good, good point. Take action and focus on the positive sides uh, or things 
there's yeah. good advice in general for life. Yeah. 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 And of course, it's not like that works every single time. Definitely not. But still, you can try. So. It depends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Waldek, what's happening on your, your side? Just a quick run. So <laughs> this week, as we're recording that, is already Thursday. So I don't expect much to happen this week. But the next week, as we are playing this, it's a release week. It's the end of the month again. So we are releasing a new version of the Microsoft 365 developer, de developer proxy and CLI for Microsoft 365. Packed with features. Definitely keep an eye out on the announcements for CLI for Microsoft 365. We have new major, V7. We've been around apparently for six years or soon. So it's yet another year for us, yet another uh, release where we break a few things. That's just the realities of life. We learn along the way and adjust and clean up after ourselves and the mess that we've made over time. But the cool thing is that we are still here and, and evolving it a lot and you get to benefit from that. So, yes. And you're uh, not going to go away. So that's good. So. Not planning. I'm not moving. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, Lisa, how, how are your plans? What's coming up? Uh, I don't actually, for next week, I'm watching the calendar. A lot of, lot of um, small stuff. We don't have any major, major massive uh, agreements, but of course, the weekly community calls, big thing for us, uh, executing those, um, the YouTube production, social media, all of that stuff. There's a lot of, lot of things happening. Of course, the Power Platform Conference is impacting our community's things as well, because um, half of the core audience and presenters are basically there. Uh, so, but it's this time I'm not flying over. So I, I feel a bit bad. So, but it's okay because last year I was in Orlando and that was pretty fun. So even though it's a power platform thing and I'm not technical, but you know, it's complicated. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really cool. But I guess that's it for now. Um, we tried to do 30 minutes. We did, we were completely failed on that um, as we always do. It's okay. We kind of oh. catch up on the articles. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but it's, it's okay. This was good discussion. <laughs> and, Absolutely. Thanks for having me. That was really nice. Absolutely. Thank you, Michael, thank you, for, Michael. For, for joining. And uh, not on you if we go belong. It was a really good discussion. So thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll jump on the weekly articles right after this. Excellent. Thank you, Michael, one more time. Uh, really, really cool. Uh, good to good to catch up as well. And an awesome discussion uh, on different topics. And and I, I think the well, governance and change, change management, as we talked during the interview as well, certain things move in cycles and they will never go away. It's technology evolves, but, you know, human beings and change management and governance, um, they are critical pieces on, on making anything happen. Good, good, good. How about the articles of this week? No, let's no. Uh, let's get no, let's, <laughs> let's, let's do them. There's a lot I, of I lot think of stuff we've got again. quite a few of them, so yes. it will be really cool to see what's new and what's coming and what's cooking. Yes, let's start with a, this article from How to Transform uh, a Work with Plugins for Microsoft 365 Copilot and AI Apps uh, from Srini Rakhavan. And as I'm telling this, I just realized that we somehow magically skipped uh, all of the blog posts related on Copilot announcement. Anyway, we're, we're really good on prepping this. Wow, uh, let's actually start. Not with all that of them. One. It's actually, it's actually we have one here. Yes, yes, not all of them. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Now, uh, let me actually do a bit of a, you know, uh, where, where, where's our blog? Uh, there live, we go. Live, live uh, adjusting. Uh, is this? This is the one. Okay, so sorry for this. Uh, let's actually start from there. Uh, we're so already so up to date on, on what's actually happening. So first of all, uh, last week we announced Microsoft 365 Copilot um, and basically the general availability of that one coming in 1st of uh, November, rolling out gradually. Um, and then what it actually means, all of the details uh, on that side. Of course, things are evolving uh, quite significantly all the time, um, but it's good to have a date when we will actually go GA uh, with the Microsoft 365 Copilot. And that's really, really cool. Uh, so customers are able to start using that starting from November 1st. And I, based on the feedback, what we're hearing, there's a lot of customers who've been like asking, asking, can I please, 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 can it uh, already, can we start using that? Um, and now we're finally have a date and, and we're starting able to start sharing more details and insights uh, what it actually does. Uh, it is incredibly cool, uh, uh, cool capabilities and you're able to take advantage of the power of the co-pilot to be more productive. I think that's always the, the, the key objective. So I've been actually recently read quite a lot of different articles and books related on AI. Well, do understandable reasons uh, internally we're 
focusing a lot of these things. And, and based on all of those, well, I think it was a uh, Harvard Business Review and all of those studies are saying that it's not that we're looking into replacing people's jobs with AI, we're just looking into making more or achieving more with the existing resources. So basically increasing the productivity and uh, not replacing people, not replacing jobs. Well, uh, well I think it, it depends on your job. I think that there are many jobs, like if you look the same way, it's just yet another wave that we sure. see now. And if you look back in the past, there were jobs that disappeared because we automated them. Absolutely. So I wouldn't say Absolutely. that we don't replace jobs, like depending on the job, like if your job is basically like moving A, something from A to B or sum yep. summarizing things, well, you might need to find ways to raise the bar. Yes. Right, right. because like people, right. right? So I wouldn't say we will not replace jobs, but it, Definitely, like the idea is to be able to help people achieve more and do more, do more, yep. uh, more quickly, more easily, right? But that also means that some things we will automate, right? Because now yep. we can. Uh, so with 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 that, for some jobs, you might need to think of new ways. Yep. How Absolutely. can you, you know, like, what are the things that AI cannot do, and what is the value that you could add on top? Absolutely. And it's interesting to see how fast this will basically then be adapted um, as a day to day work, uh, because, again, that's the, always the new technology takes time to adapt. Um, I think there was a really interesting reference point was that whenever electricity was invented, first of all, everybody thought that it's magic because, you know, why? How could that be? But it actually took 40 years. Uh, for electricity from the invention to make it, make it main, mainstream. So third, third 40 years, uh, which is actually quite a lot of time, uh, but it, it always takes time for ad adapting things. And of course, in this case, if we talk about the larger AI, we've been doing larger AI for a few decades already, and then Copilot most likely will be the realization of uh, arriving and bringing that to the workplace. So it's not going to take 40 years for Microsoft 365 Copilot to adapt, not at all. We're already way past uh, that uh, that sequence. So Yeah, and I think also the caveat there, right? Because like I've, I've, I've heard the comparisons folks made with uh, electricity, TV, telephones, and one key part there is the infra. Like yeah. To get electricity, you need cables, you need yes. power stations, yes. you need to build physical stuff, TV, again, you need lines, you need standing signals, you need radio stations, like you need physical infra. Yep. Here, it's digital thing, like we have internet already, and the only thing that will drive advancements are GPUs, right? And and even 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 ad advancements there, right? Sure. So there's, I think, less dependency. Like, and that is also the thing, like, when there was the comparison, how long it took with different uh, inventions to reach 100 million folks, right? And yep. it was like, with this was like a week or so, like, like Open really AI. no time. Chat Why? GPT. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's so, because it's already available to everybody who's got internet, right? True. And as, True. as that number grows, well, like it will be easier to reach folks because there's yep. no dependency for you to buy anything or have a box in your house or a True. line attached to your house, True. right? You don't need, True. need, you need that. So with that, like these advancements will go really, really fast. True. Absolutely. Absolutely. The readiness is already there. So now we're just taking advantage of the of the AI through the Microsoft 365 Copilot. So really, really cool. Looking forward on starting to roll out these things. And of course, now we're coming back, back to the next article, which is that you can actually extend the Microsoft 365 Copilot. See? Why would you want to do that? transition. Uh, now, why would you want to do that? Of course, uh, a lot of the, the businesses work with their business relevant data and, and you have your own APIs and own information and might want to actually have an uh, extensibility in place to connect that data with your productivity data. Um, so you're able to then be even more efficient and take advantage of the co-pilot and the AI with that business uh, data which you have. So really, really cool stuff uh, for sure. Um, and this one from Srini is basically just focusing on that extensibility option uh, related on uh, ISV apps um, and what they can actually provide us and sample and scenarios. And also how can we introduce, for example, uh, line of business plugins. Uh, so bringing information directly from the back, back end uh, to the chat and integrating things. Uh, so again, rather than switching from the context of the work and going somewhere else, you can just easily access the information directly where you are. So really, really cool stuff. And how do we build this? Well, we built them uh, with existing 
technology, which is actually really cool. Rather than introducing something which is completely new, hey, no, no, it's it's Microsoft Teams messaging extensions, it's Power Platform connectors, it's it's Microsoft Graph connectors. So it's it's not rocket science. Uh, it's just basically making sure that you're able to plug in your API directly within the uh, intent. Um, and what will happen in practice? Uh, well, like, do you want to work for the process? I'm writing something like, give me the, the order details. And then the AI is able to figure out that, oh, I don't have these details, but hey, there's this extensibility option. I now know how to call that, right? Exactly. Yes, it's it's exactly that. I mean, and the additional things you bring, and sometimes we call them skills, we call them tools, depending on which model and where in the world you are. Uh, but it's basically that. It's the ability to bring additional information or to ground your LLM in additional info that isn't a part of the model itself. Because again, like you might not want to train model on something that is evolving every week because that's really, re really expensive. But yeah, sure. you want to be able to reason over that. Yeah. Right. So having the ability to bring additional things into it, like that's to be honest, the way I see that is that unless you will do that, AI in your org will become just a gadget. Like, yes, it's cool to, you know, have it summarize piece of text you paste, but like, really, is that really the maximum you can get out of it? No. Yep. But it, it's, so, so for you to truly get the benefit, get, get a return on that investment you make in AI, you have to give it access to all the files, the documents you create in your, in, in your work, but also give it access to other things that you've got in your apps for, for work. So you, you need both. And the yep. only way to do that is to think of these additional skills, plugins, tools, whatever you want to call them, right? To get to expose this additional info to your sure. uh, um, uh, AI experiences. And maybe one thing to actually there, what you said, which is super important to realize that it's not that you're training the AI with that data. No, you're basically using the AI to summarize the data or give you the alternative perspectives of the reactive data. So you're basically saying for AI, hey, here's the current information about the cells. Can we do blah, 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 blah with this data and draw conclusions based on the whatever you've been trained on the business intelligence or whatever. Um, and that that's how it actually works. So you're not actually feeding your business data to the AI. That's not the idea. Well, I mean, if you say like if you could understand it in a really literal way, like you don't feed data in AI. Well, well, if you, you feed kind of it to LLM, does that mean feeding yes. into AI? Because yes. AI is such, such a broad fair. thing, right? Fair. So, fair. Uh, but yeah, like, and and also like you could you could have your own own model like that, that, that you build on top Absolutely. of the data. But the idea here is that you don't need that for everything. For some yep. things, it's just enough for you to bring the data. And it's actually two things. Like one is bringing the data based on identifier, right? So imagine that you want to know something about a product and you know it's skew. That is just like very simple key, key, keyword search, like find me this yep. or get me more info about that, like or bring that info about the context and you already know it. But the other one is, and there's also this interesting thing where you want to search for insights. You basically, you don't know uh, what you want to see and you ask you this very open-ended thing, like, hey, what has changed since last week? And maybe it was a meeting, maybe it was a file, maybe it was new product SKU, anything, right? So you open this, so or so you ask this open-ended uh, um, uh, thing, and then you want AI based on all the different types of info it can access to reach out to these new, like, hey, that person, or maybe you're asking that in the context of a meeting with folks and you want to can learn more about that, right? So, so there are different ways to use that. And the cool thing is, is that at the end of the, the day, the quality of the answer depends on the quality of the data you give AI access Correct. to. Correct. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's actually a good point as well. So it, it, yeah, absolutely. We're spending way too much on the articles. Okay, cool. It's AI. It's very it's AI. interesting. Well, it's, it is interesting. It's, it's definitely interesting. And then, of course, we'll have the component-specific AIs on top of the co-pilots. And, and I love the, the definition of, of, you know, the AI is... is you can teach the AI based on the information it is giving you back. So you basically have this feedback loop. It's getting better and better because you basically tell them that the information was valid or not valid, and then it gets better and better and better and better and better. And that's actually, well, 
a lot of opportunities for business data uh, and automation there for sure. Now, let's actually then uh, move forward on the article. So we also had a article uh, from the Microsoft Teams book on deploy frontline dynamic teams is now available in public preview. So basically you're able to be much more specific on the frontline worker definitions and the teams, how, what are the functionalities within the teams and those different conf configurations based on the frontline worker group of people, location and profiles and all of that. So really, really cool capabilities there. I think the frontline workers is a definitely an area where we'll see more investments. Well, not that we wouldn't see more investments in anywhere else. We do, but still a lot of, lot of focus on the frontline workers. Now, Mark Cashman uh, had a uh, episode with uh, Amy Dolzin uh, around the intra, intra zone podcast, uh, talking about the communities inside of the company, uh, so inside of the enterprises as well. And really, really interesting discussion for the six minutes. Uh, see, they're much faster than we are. So I don't. So. Oh, just, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so good, good, good discussion uh, there. Um, and and Amy is working in the EY, uh, so Ernst & Young. Is it still saying Ernst & Young or is it EY? Just, I don't know. Clearly. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I think That's we should true. we should listen to interview to learn that. That's true. That is true. Yes. <laughs> Maybe they will talk about it. Now, something interesting on the API side, um, which is which is good. I live, I I really like the fact that we're cleaning up our, uh, our let's say, <laughs> old stuff as well. So rather than just introducing more capabilities and capabilities, we are basically also cleaning up and, and getting rid of the older extensibility. Uh, because again, this is a resourcing challenge. Uh, and uh, we are retiring to exchange web services for exchange online um, because of Craft having exactly the same capabilities available. So you're able to achieve the same outcomes with the Microsoft Craft, and there's no reason to then maintain two different API surfaces. That's basically what it means. And the timeline is pretty decent, uh, so there is enough time to react, uh, as long as people are reacting. So I can imagine that, you know, there's so many systems nowadays running here and there, so um, yeah. will you know before the APIs are gone that, that there was a hit on that API? I don't know. Hopefully you yeah, do. and maybe a, be um, uh, a nuance to add to, to 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 what you said. You cannot do everything that you would do with EWS with Graph, and we even uh, I mentioned that in the sure. article, right? So sure. there are some gaps that that we're looking into addressing, but it's already like we for the most common things that we see, we offer ability to do that with Graph, Correct. right? So that that, that, way of that, saying that, that, that is why we're saying that we have enough but we are aware that we don't have everything yet right so yes. more will probably come yep. but for now it's for many things it is enough already so yep absolutely absolutely and the feedback is super important so feedback 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 let us know if there's challenges related on these announcements now there was a also a blog post related on, uh, from lena gerard uh, data suggest microsoft 365 certification increases app adoption rates and uh, so basically based on in telemetry we have uh, we can see that as long as you're certified uh, for microsoft 365 your app is that will actually has a positive impact on the app usage so that's actually really good and there are links on how to get your app then certified if you are an ISV. Now, GitHub has a GitHub Copilot chat is in beta and available for all individuals. What does this mean, uh, Walde? So it's really cool experience uh, in VS Code. I assume that that's about v specifically VS Code, I would assume. I, I, I don't think info mentioned. Yes, it is, right? So in VS Code, you have this ability to have a chat, right? Copilot chat, right? And it's like, well, yet another chat, but this one is about code, right? So it's yep. specifically trained and optimized for working with code. And it's a really cool thing because you can chat with it in VS Code about your code. And it's like, just the other day, I wanted to have a script, a bash script to remove a bunch of repos that I forked. Well, like typically how you do it. Well, like first things first, like how do I do, how do I get only fork repos with specific name from uh, GitHub? How do yep. I loop all that? Like, yep. I don't care about any of that. I don't need to get a PhD and I just want to clean up my repos. I, and it give, gave me script that worked almost instantly, right? Like I need to change a thing in the, the name, just, just as like a minor tweak, but overall it just works. And I think yep. like, this is a really, really huge thing because 
oftentimes like there are things at work that we do we are experts in pro, pro proficient in and we just do right so for yeah. these things like do you need help maybe maybe if you need to type a lot but there are oftentimes there are still things that you haven't done in the past you don't have a reference you have an idea you know what it's should, su supposed to do you just don't know all the different bits and typically, yep. typically in the past you would have to go to the internet find you know go through forums find the different things and build your own thing now you don't need that you can you can stay in ide stay in the zone work more effectively and save a bunch of time so this is a huge thing like i use it it a lot and i love it I have to say that this is a great reminder on on the example of what we're saying also for business data, which is that the system and AI is as powerful as the quality of the data you f you feed to it. As so basically how it's being trained. So, and of course, the GitHub um, automation data uh, or what what the chat is providing for you is as powerful with the data where it's being trained. And coming back on the documentation has to be solid uh, where it's actually oh, yeah. reading. Um, so. It's, and of course, it's documentation, probably multiple forums and all of that able to detect what is actually the the, the, the right thing to do. So. Code samples, definitely. Yeah, yep. yep. definitely. Cool. Uh, on the Power Platform site, there has been a hack together. Uh, and this is a recap uh, on the keynote uh, within the hack together, uh, where we had Ryan Cunningham, uh, Vice President of Power App, actually uh, doing that, which is really, really cool. Uh, and this is, uh, I think, I think we did the hackathon is actually closing this week, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, submissions are due by 11th at 59 p.m. BST, Thursday, September 28th, so 2023. So a few days time still on the submissions, but really, really cool. And of course, you're getting a digital batches as you're submitting in, uh, submitting your samples, which is awesome. At least, if nothing else, if you're not winning, you're learning new stuff and you're submitting uh, your sample uh, and then you'll get a batch out of that, which is. And also they have swag, they have backpacks, they have socks yep. and they have t-shirts. Yep. That is really cool. Yep, absolutely. 100%. So again, you've got nothing to lose, everything to win. Hack together with Power Platform. Submit your yes. hacks. Absolutely. Now on the Power Automate side, easy navigation across Power Platform and environments. That's really cool. Changes and updates uh, on their side as well, so you can more efficiently move across the, the different functionalities and, and capabilities directly within the Power Automate UI. Makes perfect sense. Awesome, awesome improvements. And also this one is interesting. We chatted about this one a while, while introducing Power Automate plugging for ChatGPT. ChatGPT has more than 100 million monthly active users, um, and it's the fastest growing uh, internet service uh, ever. Um, and it makes sense actually have a tempo the power automate integration points there as well. Whatever the, those are and automating, that's obviously up to you uh, to figure out what we're going to do that. But absolutely cool idea and awesome to see that side evolving as well. Now, Chandani had a uh, blog in the Microsoft 365 Power Platform community blog, uh, sent approval in Microsoft Teams using Power Automate. And that's actually really, really cool as well. Uh, awesome, awesome blog, step-by-step uh, -step going uh, with some broken images, which we need to double check what's causing that. So probably, hmm. we will need to go and fix them. Yeah, eh, we will. Pro we will. Probably but uh, again, path. yeah. Probably a path, absolutely. Now, Nandeep had a blog post uh, on bring your own data to Microsoft Teams chatbot with Microsoft OpenAI and LangChain. And that's actually really cool as well. So um, again, simplified you know, process picture, Microsoft Teams bot, you will do something LangChain in the middle, figuring out what is being uh, actually, what is the intent and then routing that request based on uh, whatever whatever the instructions are. So can you kind of summarize, well, like, what is LangChain? What does that mean? Langchain allows you to orchestrate your AI calls. Yeah. Right. So basically, in your app, you you have you have uh, um, se se several steps from the call to actual sh actually having the answer, and one one of them is actually calling the call the LLM. But again, if you want to bring your custom data in it, you need to have a step. Where do you fit that in, that. and how how yep. LLM understands at which step and which tool to choose? So Langchain yep. allows you to orchestrate all of that to kind of plug all of that in into your app. Yep, makes perfect sense. Really, really cool. Really, really cool. Thank you, Nandeep, on that one. Now, related on the theme of AI, a lot of AI stuff, which is good. People are using and testing out things. Surprise! Uh, Paul, Pollack, uh, Paul Pollack had a uh, how to get started on uh, on the Teams AI toolkit. Where's the title of the article? Uh, title of the article. 
there is no title of this article. Maybe it's on uh, the um, title tab. Yeah. Ah, uh, getting uh, started with the Teams Toolkit to leverage Azure <laughs> Open AI with Teams AI Library, and that's what it is because we are basically and uh, using using then Teams Toolkit and uh, to, to get started and and playing around things and and understanding that association. So really, really cool blog post once again, step by step going through and explaining. Hey, uh, this is how it actually works in practice. Awesome stuff. Yeah. Now, uh, Hugo Bernier had a blog post related on associate Node.js version with your SPFX solution and talks about the different uh, options on, on using NVM or NS, NVS uh, as a local uh, node version control handling. And then more importantly, uh, you can actually associate with directly within your project uh, which version should be used. So you can basically bypass or go to the right version uh, right away um, and execute that automatically. When somebody opens up the Visual Studio extension, oh, we are using this version within this project and, and you can start to that start using sense. that. Yeah. Actually, really, really cool uh, scenario or uh, improvement. Now, Ganesh Shanap had a uh, blog post related on uh, SharePoint Online displaying country flags using JSON formatting. Uh, no cool. code. No code, right? No code. Well, I want to see. This is the code. This bit. is code. This is, this is impossible. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. Look at the last lines. Look at all the parentheses that are being closed. Yep. Yeah. I would That's say that this, this, this is more code than what I write in JavaScript on our C Sharp. <laughs> That is actually a pretty decent number of that. Uh, wow. that's, that's quite a few of them. So, but again, it's, it's isn't basically it, isn't detecting. Even a low, low code. <laughs> it's detecting the, the the string, and then based on the string, it is rendering then the right image. Uh, wow. But it, <laughs> it works. Solution done. Well, so yes. It is, I mean, perfect, right? But yeah, it's, exactly. I wouldn't call this low code or no code. <laughs> Definitely not. This is <laughs> yes. This is pro stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Ganesh. Uh, and by the way, congratulations for the recent MVP. Pretty good, finally. Um, definitely deserved uh, MVP announcement or uh, acknowledgement. Now, um, Chandani also had another blog post in C Sharp Corner. Uh, retrieve all column values with BMPJS and SPFX. Um, the really quote, uh, again, basically a reference blog post on this is how you make things happen, uh, and then sharing those code samples here as well. So, excellent, excellent. Thank you for that. Sharing is caring as mentioned in the last line. Um, Steve Corey had a blog post related on is JSON formatting easier with this tool? So basically uh, there is the SP formatter tool uh, uh, written by uh, uh, Sergey Sergeyev uh, a while back. Uh, it's, it is an extension on top of the, the Chrome uh, and then it makes your life easier. It basically gives you uh, intelligence like features and all of that when you're writing uh the the list uh list formatting oh no that's code, really cool right but this is <laughs> well i mean for all the uh, parentheses that we have just seen i no, exactly. can imagine that exactly. this is invaluable exactly. like, you need absolutely. to have something 100%. like that yeah absolutely good 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 um that tool by the way has existed for a while but it's actually awesome to see that people are still finding it incredibly useful so thank you sergey uh, on that one now uh on uh stefan bauer uh, there was a blog post related on disable microsoft list experiences for lists in sharepoint um so this basically is related on the new uh, option which is whenever you're using microsoft list in a sharepoint site you are actually being uh, in the microsoft list experience uh, with the recent adjustments, and there are ways of controlling this uh, in the uh, in the flow. So you can basically flip and control uh, the behaviors if needed. And I think we do have a setting in the tenant level as well on on how this should be behaving in a tenant level. So yes. Thank you for that. Uh, 365 Message Center show, Daryl and Daniel. Um, the latest one from seven days ago, they will release a new one today, uh, but we're recording today to release it tomorrow, so it gets complicated. Uh, Planner <laughs> Loop Component, call up notes on Team Mobile, 302 episode. Um, again, recapping what's available and what's coming and the announcements on the, on the Message Center show site, really, really good. 
awesome, awesome stuff. Then we have quite a few videos. So as we released the SharePoint Framework 1.18 recently, uh, there's two videos related on that. So one from Paolo uh, uh, related on what's new in 1.18 uh, and also with live demos. So showcasing uh, what you can actually done with that. Um, the same actually with uh, uh, AC, Andrew Connell. Uh, the face is so good. Uh, so I needed to post that. No. Um, but it's, it's basically a lot of, lot of also covering what's available, what are the deprecations, what are the core dependencies, and his perception around what's what's what was uh, part of the 1.18. So really, really good. And uh, then Sympraxis Consulting had an update. Uh, I think they do this monthly uh, things, which is actually really good uh, monthly shows uh, related on community. This cat time it focused on community resources for internet owners. So really, really cool as well. That's Mark Anderson, Todd Clint, Julie Turner, and Derek Cash Peterson. And these are open uh, calls, so you can actually join them. And then in this particular thing, they go through individual resources and capabilities which are available from uh, community members and from Microsoft on, on getting started on building stuff for Microsoft 365 and portals. So really, really cool, cool stuff. Yeah. Shane had a video related on new database table options plus virtual tables. Uh, so that's actually really cool as well. If you're looking into doing and using uh, Dataverse, uh, these are great videos. Well. Shane publishes videos across the powers of Power Platform stack, not just Dataverse, but awesome video again explaining the behaviors and what it means and what is the virtual tables and all of that. So this sounds so familiar for you know virtual tables, external tables, all of that stuff, external lists, you know. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> concepts are the same, <laughs> implementations evolve, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Juliana De Luca had a new video related on how to create a video playlist in Microsoft uh, SharePoint lists. Uh, so basically creating a list of videos and how you're exposing them then uh, directly within the, within the flow of work. Really, really cool. That's cool. Uh, Steve Corey, uh, not only with the blog post, but also new videos. Uh, SharePoint news post just got better, new feature demos. So this is basically the, the sending the news articles as emails uh, functionality, ah. which is really, really cool Indeed. and functionality yeah. and that. And then uh, Daniel Anderson had a video on organized content the way you want with tags in Microsoft 365. This is one of the, I don't use this feature, but I'm so tempted on starting to use it, but it's, 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 it requires some level of, you know, uh, consistency. <laughs> I Tacking. don't organize anything. Like I, the, only, the way I, so basically I declared the bankruptcy on, on folders, like I only use search with the yeah. caveat that sometimes I struggle to find things. But then for the things I need now, let's say for the last two weeks and I might need for another month, I favor them. And yep. beyond that, when I don't no longer need them because like a whole project was done, I, un I unfavor them and they're still there and I can find them through search. True. I don't organize True. anything. Like I just, just like all files True. in a single folder. True. True. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, and I, I, I'm pretty much the same. I don't actually use favorites, but whenever, whenever I do things, I actually I write my daily, you know, journal uh, in OneNote. So because I have multiple screens, so in one of the screens, I always have a my OneNote where I'm adding pages to journal and what I do and links and all of that. Because you basically and and all of the social tweets which I write and all of that is basically there, so I can go back in time and you know and OneNote search. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> I tried I, using to do, but then I couldn't. And one yeah, note no, works for no, me better. No. no <laughs> so no, I, yeah, and I think one issue that I had with it, but that was already way in the past, where it was just so slow to open, to load, like opening. I don't, I don't have that problem. No, okay. No, 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 well, I mean, no, yeah, you are no. you are you are on Windows. I'm on Mac, and and again, yeah, I tried I it years I back. So, I yeah, you know what. Yeah. So how I do things, which I can't show what's written there because there's confidential stuff, but I basically do a weekly uh, a page, always create it. So every single Monday, I basically create a page and then I move my checkbox to-do list from the previous week if there's anything important and then just adding notes, 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 notes. So, because cool. I remember better when I write it down once. Uh, not that I need oh, to yeah. go back in that, but it's, it's for the memory as well. So. Yep. 
Good. And then the last thing, uh, we had quite a few samples uh, coming again on last week on the Microsoft 365 Power Platform Sample Gallery. One of them was from you. So just to call out here, that you on uh, Microsoft provided samples. Everything is in a one centralized location. You can use the keywords defining them. Uh, Michael Cornett, uh, Sven, uh, Paul Pollock, a uh, lot of lot of samples across the different uh, technologies. And one of yeah. them was from you, which was the Microsoft Graph mocks from Microsoft Graph API docs with the sample data. What is this? Absolutely, right? So imagine that you're doing a demo and you want to be able to show something like upcoming appointments. Typically, the yep. way you would do it, well, you need to know when the demo is and then create those events in calendar so that they will sure. show 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 up. With this, you actually don't because you have mock set that basically says that like whenever you call Graph API to get upcoming uh, appointments, just show, show this. And this yep. works basically, we have mocks across all of the graph so one and two, this sample specifically includes even the sandbox data, which you see, for example, in Graph Explorer. Yeah. Right. So this is basically Critical. there is an environment that we've got with demo, then like then demo users, demo meetings, and so forth and so on. And we have mocks for them. So whenever yep. you have a demo, a conference presentation, or you want to dev and you don't need, then you don't want to create all these things. Yep. You can use this and that saves you a bunch of time and gives you, the cool thing is, it gives you predictable results on every run. Yeah. <clears throat> you should do a demo on this. Oh, wait, you are. You can a demo probably this ah. one in the 3rd of October. Uh, so. Yes. Join me <laughs> and learn more. Yes. And that demo will be recorded and published in the YouTube channel for sure. I guess that's it for now. We went way long, but that was the AI discussion. So, you know. Yes. See, is AI increasing our productivity or is it causing? AI ah, has ah, that ah, tendency ah. to do that too. <laughs> yes. No, but that was a good discussion. So that was really good. And thank you, Michael, for joining on the on the weekly uh, show and for the interview. Really cool uh, discussion as well. I, I think it's a it's a governance is a such a critical piece uh, within the IT nowadays. So it's it's good to have that discussion. It's not about technology. It's about how do we evolve and adapt that technology and change management and all of that. What are the implications within two to three years always? Cool. I guess. <laughs> yes. Two to three years in DIT. Good luck with that. Yeah, exactly. That's true. That is fair. That's fair. We can barely see what, what's going to happen next week, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not that bad, but I get yeah. your point. Yes. Next week, MGM, uh, MGM Las Vegas is Power Platform Conference. So that's on next week. So ha, I know what's happening next week. Yeah, if you if if you're going, enjoy, meet people, shake head or not. If that's not your thing, yeah. say hi to folks, get connected, learn. Absolutely, enjoy. absolutely. Cool. Anyway, we went already the weekly summaries. Uh, anybody who's writing anything cool stuff, please use hashtag PMP Weekly in X, uh, Twitter thingy, whatever whatever we call that. We're trying to capture all of the cool stuff what the community is doing, but that helps us on finding the stuff what you're doing. But other than that, I guess that's it for now. So thanks everybody for watching, listening, whatever is your chosen method, and we'll be back within a week. See ya.